Newness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust I find you well and we are on part five on this series, Family Togetherness. And it has been an interesting time to be with you for this week as we have been starting from the Word of God. Many thanks goes out to Breath of Life SDA Church in Britain for this opportunity to share with you from the Word of God. And for those who have been coming in every night to watch these videos, may God bless you. We are not going to be on this earth for long. Pretty soon, pretty soon, we are headed home. This does remind me of that song we used to sing, Lord, I've never been this homesick before. I hope you are as homesick as I am. Corona has made it very imperative that we get home sooner. The status quo in our families makes us wish we were not here anymore. We were in heaven. The economies that are tanking and failing make us wish for a place where we shall walk on streets of gold. Long for a place where all of us shall have a mention to our names. When we live in our mansions, we are not going to be paying any landlords. We shall know no mortgages. That home is a home to be. And like the prodigal son, do not wish to be a servant in that home. You are a son in your own right. You are a daughter in your own right. And your father awaits your return every day and he can't wait to take you in his arms. He can't wait to give you a new robe and cover you with the robe of righteousness. He can't wait to insert on your finger the signet ring of authority. Our Father is waiting for us to get home at last and home at last is the sermon title for this evening. As we go into this study, let us take a brief moment in prayer to thank the Lord. Take a brief moment in prayer to appeal to the heavens on high that we may get home safe and sound. Our heads are bowed and we are praying. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of sharing from your word. Thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity to hear you speak to us one more time. We are fortunate because, number one, we are counted amongst the living. Number two, we still have a conscience to hear you. Your word has come to us in season and in time. We are the intended targets of your word. How we pray, dear Father, that even as we go into this last session for tonight, you can continue to minister unto us. And tomorrow, as your men servant, shall stand up to speak on behalf of the living, how we as the dry bones may come to life and live again through your word, through the unction of the Holy Spirit. I want to pray for our families, for when you shall come to take those who have loved you, those who have kept all your commandments and followed after thee, how we pray that it shall be a day of celebration when we are taken into the heavenly gates, husbands and wives, children and our grandchildren, and our posterity to the third, fourth, and fifth generation, may that day, may that day be our allotment. This is our prayer of faith because we know when Christ shall come, he shall come to take those who have faith in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Be with us in Jesus' name. We pray and we ask, amen, amen. For this evening, allow me not to raise five points, but I'll make them seven because I need to add two for good measure. It is the seventh day of the Lord. It is a day of rest. Come with me to the book of uh, Revelation. We are at Revelation chapter two, the verses seven. Listen to what the Lord says. And this time he speaks to John so that he can relay this message to the church of Ephesus, so that as it is relayed to the F church of Ephesus, he who hears, who hears, will benefit even though they are not a member of the church of Ephesus. What do I say? So come with me to the book of Revelation chapter 2, we're at verse number 7. Anyone, let me take that again, anyone 
for emphasis, anyone for dramatic effect, anyone who has an ear should listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Yes, the Spirit speaks to the churches, but it addresses uh, this discourse to anyone. And that anyone could be you, it could be me, and definitely it is I. Anyone, I will give the victor, listen to the promise, the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in God's paradise. Allow me to have a moment to just revel in this promise. For when we are home at last, we shall get to heaven and discover that there is a river that flows from the throne of God. As it flows down astride this river, there is a tree. And this tree is mounted on the left side and on the right side. And the river runs right through this tree. And in this tree are found fruits of all kinds, 12 different fruits. And the Bible says these 12 fruits are there so that those who have made it home at last have a right to eat from the tree of life. This is the summarized version. As you read further on, you're going to realize that of these 12 fruits of different kinds, you have a right to eat them. They are on the tree. As if that is not enough. What else can you eat? You can also eat the leaves, for they are for the healing of the nations. One writer says, when we get to heaven, Adam shall stand next to Christ. And Adam shall realize how high Christ is. And he is at about shoulder height of Christ. As he looks down at those of us who have been afflicted by sin, those of us who look so tiny because of sin, Adam shall say, look at my deeds and what they have done. And guess what? We shall all line up and we shall eat of the I mean, the leaves of the tree, which are for the healing of the nations, we shall be healed of sin. This tree is an antidote of sin. When we are home at last, sin shall be reversed. When we are home at last, what sin has done unto us shall be undone. Praise to the God Almighty. When we are home at last, we shall stop by this tree and not ask for fruits, not ask for leaves, for we shall have a right. It's not a privilege to eat on the tree. When Adam left the Garden of Eden, this tree was planted in the Garden of Eden and he was chucked out with his wife. As they walked out, the reason was so that they will not have access to the tree of life, lest they should remain perennial and eternal sinners. God had to see to it that an angel with rolling blades of fire was planted by the Garden of Eden and he washed it from outside and would not be granted access to Eden. He left his home a persona non grata an unwelcome person, but we, the descendants of Adam, shall be ushered back into our home where we belong so that we may have access to the tree of life, so that we may live eternally, so that we can do whatsoever pleases our minds in God's paradise. The last time Jesus made this promise, it was on the cross and he said to the thief, Today, I tell you, you shall be with me in paradise. And he makes the promise to everyone. And he says, whosoever victors on earth, when you are home at last, you will be in God's paradise. To the church in Smyrna, fast forward to verse 11. He writes and says one more time, anyone who has an ear should listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. The victor will never be harmed by the second death. The victor 
shall never be harmed by the second death. For when we have been granted access to the tree of life, we shall live eternally, and sin will never enter into the gates of heaven. One thousand years we shall rule with the Lord. Let me not get ahead of myself. I will get to that point. But when we are there after a thousand years, we shall return to earth. Those who would have died in sin shall be resurrected in the condition in which they would have died. Those who would have, have been saved would have been resurrected to put on immortality. And those who will be dead, the Apostle Paul says, we shall not precede them. They shall join us as we are taken up to meet him in the skies. That day is coming and there is a home that we're headed to and that home is around the corner. I want to invite you, my friends, for when we come back after a millennium, there shall be a second death when the devil and his lieutenants shall seek to siege and overtake the new Jerusalem as they attempt to do so. Fire and brimstone shall rain from heaven above and from below. It shall be a repeat of the flood, but this time not with water. Fire shall consume all the inhabitants of earth and these very earth, as Revelation puts it, says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is both hell and this is the new earth. Wait until Jesus touches it up, for these shall become our home. Thereafter we shall visit heaven as often as we want to. Not only will the devil have an opportunity to repeat the job experience of appearing in heaven and saying, I am wandering to and fro. We shall appear in heaven every Sabbath, for the Bible says, from one moon to the next moon, from one Sabbath to the next Sabbath, they shall appear before the throne of heaven. What shall happen? Wait until we are 2,000 years back on earth, one Sabbath to the other. We shall appear before the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Then those who have loved the Lord, those who have followed him, those who have made it home, the second death shall not be their portion. Come to point number three. We talk to the church in Pegamon, and we are now in verse number 17. Anyone who has an ear, repeat it for the third time, should listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. I will give the victor some of the hidden manna. I will also give him or her a white stone and on the stone a new name is inscribed that no one knows except the one who receives it. Amen. What is this promise? When we are home at last, those who went through the pilgrimage of the Exodus, they ate manna, and thereafter a bowl of manna was placed inside the ark in the most holy place. As a testimonial, it was hidden so that the future generations are going to appreciate that we have a God who is the provider, we have a God who is the deliverer. As we get to our home at last, the Bible says we are going to be reminded it could not have been possible had it not been for the provisions of the Lord. It would not have been possible had it not been for the deliverance of the Lord. We shall be given the hidden manna. And Jesus, even as the Sadducees come to him, he even makes a simple, simple leaning to this. And he says, when we live in heaven, we shall live like angels. What do angels eat in heaven? They eat manna. Manna. We shall be given the hidden manna when we are in heaven. As if that is not enough, we shall be given each one of us a white stone. What is the significance of white? Purity. What is the significance of the stone? It is something of value. Remember, the high priest, as he walked around, he had a rubric that he won, and on this uh, effort that he won, there were the 12 stones. And the Bible says, you are royal priests, you are a royal generation, and each one of you shall be confirmed with a stone that indeed you are a priest for you shall serve in heaven. What is this? You shall get to heaven and you shall receive this white stone. And remember, while Christ was on earth, he then told the story 
of the young man who was prodigal and a father who was even more prodigal than he was. How was he prodigal? He wasted his father's resources. When he was done and wasted himself, he comes home only to have his father waste his love and kindness on him. An undeserving son who is loved unconditionally and he is given a signed ring of authority. When we get back to heaven, God says you shall be given a white stone, a signed ring, a stone of authority and on this authority, stone of authority, there shall be written your name. Your name. It is not a stone that shall be passed down. This is a stone that would have been prepared for you. This is a stone that would have been crafted for you. This is a stone that is ready and waiting for those who make it to our home at last. Remember, our sermon title is still Home at last, and home is where I'm headed to. Home is where I am going. Home is the place to be. That is where you and I ought to go and receive a new name. Why a new name, a new identity? Why a new name, a new belonging? Why a new name, a new position? Some of our names need to be gotten rid of. Some of our names are not names of... um, Pride, they are names that we are even ashamed of. We are all going to get a new name. Heaven is the home to be. Come with me to point number four, to the church in the Yatra. We are now at verse number 26. The chapter is still two. Listen to how he begins. The one who is victorious and keeps my works to the end, keeps my works to the end. I will give him authority over the nations. I will also give him the morning star. Man, home at last. When we are at home, take note, God says, I will give him authority over the nations. What are we getting to do when we get to heaven? We are going to judge the fallen nations. We are going to judge even the fallen angels. And Christ is saying, when you get home, you shall have the authority to reign. You shall have the authority to be a leader. As the book of Revelations begins, it says, Then I saw him who was in the temple, and he was behind the candlestands, and he had seven stars in his hand. And the Bible then goes on to say, I am going to give each one of you a morning star. Can you imagine owning a star? Some of us own dolls. Some of us own our iPads. Some of us own cars. Some of us own mansions. But none of us has ever owned a star. Wait until you get home. Christ wants to show off. He says, hasn't a father, a father, when a child asks for bread, for fish, he gives this child a snake. When a child asks for a stone, I mean for bread, he gives this child a stone. But when we get to heaven, he wants to show off, my child, you have been away for too long. Let me pamper you. Let me have you feel what it is like to be back home. Here at home, we do not hand out toys. We hand out stars. People play with stars in heaven. That is our home. That is the place to be when you own a star. Then you shall know your home at last. Isn't this the place to be? Isn't this the place to be? Listen to point number five as he speaks to the church in Sardis. In the same way, hmm, the victor will be dressed in white clothes. We have a white stone and now we are dressed in white clothes and I will never erase his or her name from the book of life, but I will acknowledge his name before my father and before his angels. Allow me to give just a brief commentary here. As you look into the book of Revelation, you're going to find that there are 12, 24 elders. These 24 elders, we are told they are dressed in white. They have crowns and they also take time to bow down and they, along with the beasts that are before the throne on high, sing out, holy, holy, holy to the God Almighty, who is worthy to be praised. They are in white, and when we are also in white, 
we begin to join the 24 elders so that we can become part of the praise team of heaven, so that we can even ascend and give him all the glory and the praise. When we are in heaven, heaven has a record, a permanent record. It is the book of life. And Nehemiah says, Lord, for the good that I have done, do not blot out my name from the book of life. From that book of life, Christ says, when you get home, your name shall never be erased. Your name shall be immortalized. Your name is written in the book of life. For this finger that wrote the Ten Commandments on the tables of stone has written your name in the book of life. There you belong. You are someone to be acknowledged. For you are a victor. And God says, I will acknowledge you before my father. And before his angels, you shall not be the other guy. You shall be known in heaven. <laughs> you shall be known in heaven. You are not going to be, who, who's that guy from earth? You shall be known by your name. Most of us cannot be known. We are hardly acknowledged where we go. No one knows us. But wait until we get home. Home at last where all of us shall count, where all of us shall be known by God the Father, where all of us shall be known by the angels. Should anyone want to check my name, I'll just say, do not worry, just go to the book of life. My name is there. Heaven is the place to be. I'm getting so excited. I can see it. I can feel it. I am so excited about it. Why heaven listened to his message to the church in Philadelphia? We're now in Revelation chapter 3, the verses 12. The victor. The victor, I will make him a pillar in the sanctuary of my God. He'll be a pillar. Not only will you be a pillar, and he will never go out. Again, I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And my new name. Why should you be in the sanctuary? You will not know this until you study the background of Lucifer. Lucifer walked on the stones in the sanctuary of God. He was an angel that ministered in the sanctuary of God. And he began to nest evil in his heart. As he nursed this evil, he then said, I will ascend and make my throne higher than that of God. And he then went out of the sanctuary, and he never went in again. So when we are home at last, let's take this again. He will never go out again. We are not going to fall like Lucifer. We are not going to slip into sin. And then Christ says, I will write on him the name of my God. The name of my God. Why is the name of my God to be written? You're going to remember, go back to the apparel of the priest. The priest also had something that was written on his forehead. There was a tabern that had an inscription to the Lord, service to God. What are we to become in this uh, heavenly sanctuary? We are to become the priests. The name of the city of my God. Why the name of the city of my God? Paul then says, we have no residence in this place, but we are pilgrims. Our citizenship is in heaven. Why the name? Because we are citizens of the new Jerusalem. Why the new name? Because we will no longer be aliens in heaven, but we shall belong. We shall be citizens with the full rights. We shall be people of heaven. Hallelujah. And even as we are having those, Christ then says, not only will you have the name of the city, but you shall have my name as well. For he who has bought us, he is the one who has redeemed us. He is the one who has made us. We are indeed in his image. And he who was in the beginning, and all things consist because of him, says, you shall carry my name when we are home at last. Point number seven as we come to the end. To the church in Laodicea, he says, Revelation 3, the verses 21, I will give him 
the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I also won the victory and sat down with my father on his throne. Anyone, verse 22, who has an ear should listen to what the Spirit says to the churches and notice that as we began, we are given the right to the tree of life. As we end on promise number seven, we are given the right to sit with Christ on his throne. The right to sit with Christ. If ever there's been a time when the world has been on a rights movement, this is the time. But when we are home at last, we are going to get the rights that matter. The right to sit on the throne. The right to govern the universes. The right to govern the unfallen nations the right to rule with Christ in the heavens, then you shall know you are home at last. Until you become a king, you are not home. Until you become a queen, you are not home. Until you have a throne, you are not home. Come with Christ. The time is nigh. It is much nearer than when we first began. For to love the Lord is to love his appearing. That is our second hope. That is our greatest hope. It is the hope that carries us through. We have a home beyond that outshines the stars, <clears throat> outshines even the sun. I've got a glory land. And this is the land of Beulah land. I am headed to that home. And soon and very soon, Christ shall break the eastern skies. And may it be well with every individual. We may not be saved as families, but the Bible says anyone, anyone. We may be families on earth, but when it comes to matters of salvation, we shall be saved as individuals, as individuals. Take time to decide for the Lord. Before this series comes to an end, Christ says we are a family and I wish to gather all the nations from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. They all have a place in the heavenly family. And your place is set. God has seen to it that the place is prepared and ready for you. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready? If you are saying, Lord, I am ready. I wish, I wish to receive the seven promises when we are home at last. You have not made that decision before. It is your first time. My number is appearing just below. This is my number. Take my number. Plus 263-0775-665545. I'll take it again. Plus 263-775-665545. Reach out and let's see how we can assist you to cement this decision for the Lord. May the good Lord continue to bless you, my dear friends, until you meet again, in Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for being our Father. Thank you for your mission that that which the Lord God has given unto you will not lose any, and you do not desire to lose any. Call us, dear Father, for some of us have wandered away like the Gomas, May you pull us back into the straight and narrow. Some of us have wandered away like the prodigal son. May you embrace us upon our, your, our, our return. And oh, dear Father, we also want to pray that as we make these decisions as families, as individuals, someday we'll be home at last. May we not lose that home which you have prepared for us. Mansions, streets of gold, tables full of food and the tree of life where the sheep and the lion eat together. A place of peace and serenity. Oh, dear Lord, may it come. We are tired of this earth. Save us into that kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And in the name of Jesus Christ, as we make decisions for thee, May you cement that decision and do not give us peace until you find peace with thee. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen.